This NPC is quite tucked away in comparison to the most of the adventure, but it is definitely worth the effort if you steer your party towards this location and this NPC, because it can be a very fun encounter depending on how they play it. Godfrey is pro quite possibly one of the most powerful allies the party can gain due to a number of reasons. For one, the story to him is sweet but simple, and mechanically, he is very strong. Godfrey had a lot of stuff to do with the main plot of my last Curse of Strahd campaign that I ran, and my party got to experience how cool he is. Before we get to this, we need to talk about Arjunvastol, the place that most of the revenants are from. It's a somewhat barren dungeon, in my opinion, but we'll get onto more explanations of that. So we know the history, we know why the knights are there, we know what they're doing, but how does it serve the gameplay? That is a pretty big question to me, and honestly, it's a little uncertain. The incentive is to basically just, you know, explore, but the things that come up explaining the place or giving motivations for going and doing things is very slim, and the, in, the dungeon is pretty disconnected from the rest of the plot. I think that it, its history works well with Barovia, but the present state that Arjun Vestal is in isn't that enticing for players. My old Curse of Strahd party spent like a session there, at most, uh, and they spent like the first hour getting there, so it wasn't that bountiful. A simple solution I came up with, which you can check out in the Curse of Strahd stream that we're hopefully still doing, is putting one of the magic items in the manor, instantly giving it a lot more meaning. Even just the lead of like, hey, go to Arjunvastal, there's stuff there, uh-oh. <laughs> That's enough to go there for a party. I think the other incentive is the beacon. The fact that you could find the skull in Castle Ravenloft, bring it back to the knights, and their souls are let free, and their vengeance is kind of fulfilled somewhat. The party doesn't know to do that, or know what that is, until they get in there and talk to people. So maybe throw in a few hints about, oh look, the skull's in here. Hit make a check. Oh, you learn Arjun Vistolt. Not always in that way, but you know what I mean. Maybe lore dump a little bit. Curse of Strahd's a good campaign to lore dump in. The location is great to me in terms of its specific placement on the map. The party should be able to see this from like at most session five. That place will probably loom in front of them for a while, which might be a decent incentive to get them there. Yeah, they could get there from a multiple uh, multitude of different places and it's like a stop off on the way to somewhere else. So the party might feel enticed to give that a look regardless. It's easy to get to, not recommended for early levels of course, because Revenants. Especially if the party's a little chaotic, because that could end bad. Like one wrong move, like if they piss off Vladimir, if they take anything from him or the Revenants, if they mess with any of the Revenants, it might mean they've made a new enemy because they're all bad guys, ultimately, most of them. They don't really care about the outsiders, they're just wallowing in their own pity. However, good social tact can reward the players here. Leaving open space in NPC dialogue and the like can provoke a party to talk. Maybe not with Vladimir, but everyone else, sure. Yeah, my old party absolutely rushed through this with little to no reason to actually ever be there in the first place. It was a quick in and out, they offered to help with the skull thing, they got that and they went back. That was kind of their relationship with the whole place, other than getting Godfrey out of it. Overall it was fine for them, but it kind of sucked for me honestly, they didn't really explore the full dungeon, they didn't really get to see everything that there was to see, and there was a lot of wasted potential in the location in my opinion. In any case, here's Sir Godfrey. Um, this dude is a 16th level paladin. In terms of his abilities, mostly meaning the spell casting that comes out of it. He can cast 4th level spells, or a 4th level spell. I can't remember the specifics. He is one of the revenants of the place, and generally sticks out like a sore, sore thumb for a few reasons. For one, he has a face handout. That's a, a thing that can definitely provoke a party to think, oh, this guy's important. He can be more optimistic, and if he's your designated ally in the card reading, he'll stick around until Strahd's dead. I made him stick around anyway because the party had kind of got fond of him a little bit, um, or at least I felt like he should still be around for a number of reasons that I'll get onto as we go along. I think that I, I'm not fully sure how the book does it in terms of him, uh, but thematically it makes sense for him to stick around regardless. 
Uh, he kind of waited in Arjunsvastal for a bit for the party to go off to the Amber Temple, get the Sun Sword, get back down. And then they went on a journey recruiting everyone that they went along with. I think that using him and playing him is pretty easy. Revenants are pretty one-track minded in their intentions. His main pro, if the party managed to recruit him or if he becomes an ally, is that he always knows where Strahd is. No action required. Basically, it cancels some of the surprises that Strahd has up his sleeve. It, this can be annoying to deal with as a DM, but if they have Godfrey as an ally at this point, Strahd is going to have to start working around the party, because that is when they're going to be actually doing big impactful stuff and fighting fully against Strahd at this point. I think that this feature is fun for a party to have access to. Hey Godfrey, where's Strahd? Uh. That sort of thing. In the final fight that I had, it was in the crits and Strahd kept using his lair action where he could move through walls and stuff like that to just spam the hell out of that and move in and out of them and since the crits are like a bunch of 10 by 10 foot rooms with gaps around them it was amazing for him to play around the one con of that was that Godfrey could still identify where he was most of the time it involved a lot of opening doors and being like haha I found you and then it's like oh that's my turn okay and then he goes through a different wall and runs off somewhere else but yeah, since he kept doing that, it was really useful to keep track of him. Also, if he's there for the final fight, he's an absolute Strahd killing machine. He gets 4d6 extra damage on every single attack against Strahd, in addition to him, have, him having just better weapon damage overall. He also has access to a lot of big smite spells for even more damage if he hits. Basically, have him around for the final fight, in my opinion. It's gonna be cool. Something that I don't know what I think about, but is certainly interesting about his stat block, is that he doesn't really have good armor. To counteract the fact that he's a big spellcaster, he's wearing leather armor. That greatly reduces his AC in comparison to the rest of the Revenants, which I think is fine. It doesn't increase his health either, but he is basically shifted from being a Revenant to a Revenant Paladin and the focus is a bit more on the paladin side, despite, you know, the leather armor. Uh, my party didn't kid him out with anything better, because they didn't have many things that were better, I think. They might have had a set of chainmail or two lying around that he could have had, but I probably wouldn't bring it up. I think that him having such a low AC is great, because all those tricks that he has can be pretty easily cancelled if Strahd and his minions just get full reign to just wail on him for a turn, and he's just done, right? He gets knocked... And I wouldn't rule that a Revenant goes unconscious. They just drop to zero hit points and they're gone for 24 hours. And yeah, that would have um, changed the tide a little bit. If Strahd ever got the chance to do that in mind. Keeping the AC low definitely means you can toy with him a little more. Maybe increase him to like medium armor so that he can keep up with the rest of the party if you intend to go beyond the level like 9 or 10 that it recommends. The whole deal with, you know, Godfrey and Vladimir's romance, in my opinion, it doesn't really get explored. Uh, in my game it didn't at least, and if it does, it's probably not going to be a key focal point. There might be some awkward banter around it, uh, where Godfrey's like, haha, remember that time when he's like, shut the fuck up. You know, that sort of thing. I think that would be funny, uh, but it's not a massive factor in the game. It's kind of cute though, like there's, there's old romances lying around and stuff, I appreciate that. I think that they wouldn't act on it, they wouldn't suddenly just start like, passionately making out the moments their memories was uh, the moment their memory is restored and stuff like that uh it could be funny to see an awkward interaction between them more than just them having a freaking make out fest like in most films <laughs> even hateful revenants still have a personality after all not all of them are just vengeful pricks most of them are there we go that's so godfrey and arjun Vistol. i might talk a little bit more in depth about the location but there isn't too much to say the dungeon itself is very bare, and I think that similarly to like Waterdeep Dragon Heist with the Sea Maidens Fair and the ships surrounding it, most of it is just buildings that have been like wrecked, basically. The theme is, oh, everything's dead. And sure, they've populated a few of them with some interesting encounters with things that do actually want to kill them in comparison to just, hi, I'm a crewmate. But yeah, it can feel a little bare at times. In any case, Thank you folks for watching. Let us know what you want to see next in the comments. I think that that really helps with my sort of process. I like having guidelines a little bit and I like knowing what I need to do in comparison to just making my own shit up until something works. Because frankly, if people want to see something more than me, then I will gradually come to like it more the more that I like research into it. I'm pretty eager on kind of covering most of the important NPCs before we get on to 
anything else in terms of the story. I talked about the town of Valaki and Van Richten's Tower, and now that is... I, I touched on Arjunba's thought a little bit, but I've, I, I kind of want to focus on the people, because the people are what make the campaign great, or are one of the things that make the campaign great, in my opinion. Thank you for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. Um, Discord. Uh, see you in the next one. See ya. Bye.